My name is Ramon Dorval. I'm a senior at the University of Illinois, currently double majoring in electrical and computer engineering, as well as business. Today I'm with Raymond Unisic. Raymond is a material scientist at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and his title is Research and Development Staff Scientist, or R&D Staff Scientist for short. Raymond is also a member of MSA. MSA stands for Microscopy Society of America. The Microscopy Society of America is a nonprofit organization which dedicates to the promotion and the advancement of techniques and applications of, micro, of, micros, of microscopy and microanalysis in all relevant scientific disciplines. Hello, Raymond. Hello, Ramon. So before we get started, could you please explain to me and the people watching this what that device is behind you and what its functionality is? Absolutely. Uh, sitting behind me is a really high power for a powerful electron microscope. Uh, so this is what we call a transmission electron microscope. And it's a way that we can use electrons to basically interact with matter and be able to use that to study uh, how atoms are arranged or basically the structure and chemistry of materials. It's a powerful uh, instrument. And uh, over the past 10, maybe 15 years, there's been a lot of advancements in uh, technique development and advanced instrumentation. And so this is one of the uh, state-of-the-art instruments with, that's equipped with a, a thing called aberration correction. So this is a way that we can get a little bit better spatial resolution that we can see uh, materials, visualize materials all the way down at the atomic scale. So quite a powerful instrument that you can study uh, a wide range of materials on. Okay, cool. Um, so my second question, could you describe to me what your typical work day entails and like what your first few uh, years in this career was like? Absolutely. So I'm a scientist at uh, a DOE or Department of Energy National uh, a user facility called uh, the Center for Nanophase Material Sciences. And basically this is a division uh, at Oak Ridge that's supported by the uh, NSRCs uh, at DOE where uh, users can come in and work with us uh, utilizing our staff expertise uh, and also uh, these advanced instrumentation like you're seeing behind me. So on a typical day, uh, I might work with a user, uh, somebody from anywhere from uh, California or all the way from the Netherlands. And this is a unique way that people can come in and work with me on um, uh, uh, these type of instruments for, uh, based on my, my, uh, my expertise. Um, aside from the user program, I also uh, have a, a couple other programs uh, at Oak Ridge and uh, on, uh, that's focused on how uh, energy materials are. So this is anywhere from supercapacitors to batteries, from membranes for water desalination, from two dimension materials for electronic application and so on and so forth. So uh, it's a pretty versatile job here uh, at Oak Ridge. I work with um, a lot of different people from different programs, whether it be chemistry, whether it be physics or material science. Uh, so on a typical workday, I would use uh, an instrument like this to do some uh, really high-end materials characterization and in situ microscopy experiments. I would also interact with a lot of uh, people at the lab and uh, across the world uh, to um, develop new areas of science or thinking about uh, how we can use instruments like this to help uh, study materials uh, science problems. Uh, so that would come in the form of, uh, you know, brainstorming ideas for writing new proposals for new experiments or writing uh, up the data that we have for publication. Uh, and that's one of our means that we can help get uh, the message out of the really uh, interesting science that we, we do here on a daily basis, the publications that we have, or uh, basically a reflection of the, the experiments that we're doing. Um, and other than that, I, I, I mentor students and postdocs. Uh, I have a couple of postdocs that I mentor and a couple of PhD students as well. So this is uh, pretty much my typical work day. Uh, I started here almost 10 years ago. Uh, I came from Ohio State University where I did an undergraduate and a PhD in material science and engineering. Um, and the first few years, I was basically under a fellowship called the Alvin Weinberg Fellowship. And all the D Department of Energy National Laboratories have these early career fellowships, which give uh, the opportunity for, for younger scientists to uh, work at a national laboratory and develop some really unique niche. And so my area that I was really interested in at the time was in situ electromicroscopy, basically uh, a way that we can study how materials uh, transform inside the electron microscope or how batteries charge and discharge or how lithium uh, dendrites would nucleate and grow. So I was working on a technique uh, called in situ electrochemical stem. 
which is basically using the high spatial resolution imaging and spectroscopy afforded by the microscope behind me, uh, but be able to, to have an electrochemical system that we can put inside the microscope that mimics uh, a lithium ion battery, for example. And so for the first couple of years, I was developing uh, this type of technique, uh, applying this for different material science problems. Then I also w was working on a, a lot of different problems from anywhere from general materials characterization of graphene, for example, uh, uh, two-dimensional materials um, from batteries from lithium ion batteries, cathodes and anodes. Uh, so it was a lot of different things at once uh, uh, in the first few years um, of my research career here. Cool. Um, so my next question, to follow that one up, uh, what high school courses or college courses would you have found to be the most applicable or important for your occupation? Or even more so, what courses do you wish you would have taken? Oh, that's an excellent question. So in high school, I think the, the high school that I went to, it didn't really focus on science too much, which is unfortunate. I think we had a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of physics, a little bit of math, but it wasn't at a level that... Uh, we as students can um, basically understand what's going on and get really interested in it. So that was unfortunate. But when I went to college, it kind of opened my eyes. So obviously when you're undergrad, you take a lot of classes if you're in the engineering dis discipline. And so this is anywhere from fundamental chemistry, from fundamental physics, uh, mathematics. Uh, so these are the type of classes that got me excited about, you know, how materials are, uh, are, are arranged at the uh, all the way down to the atomic scale. And more importantly, how that relates to the properties that you get. So also in your undergraduate classes, you have to take, as a part of the curriculum, some of my diverse areas. So at the time, I was double majoring in, in, in metallurgical engineering and welding engineering. And uh, I was taking a lot of classes in material science. And so that's a field in which you can understand. It basically draws on chemistry and physics of how uh, atoms are arranged or the crystallography material. Um, mechanical behavior materials, how they, uh, uh, they all work together to be able to understand uh, basically materials properties. So I was really intrigued with that. Um, some of the classes I wish I would have uh, uh, taken at the time was more computer science classes. A lot of the developments in the field now in electron microscopy is based on um, neural network modeling, uh, big data, data analytics, artificial intelligence, uh, that you can use the type of data that we're getting from the instruments uh, to be able to understand materials at a really fast rate. So when I first started doing electron microscopy uh, at Ohio State, we didn't have, uh, at the time, it was transitioning from uh, film to digital cameras. So I remember a lot of the images and diffraction patterns I was acquiring an instrument like this, I would have to take it out and then develop it in a dark room for, dark room <laughs> for the next hour and a half. So the technology had, has advanced significantly within the past few years. And I'm definitely seeing that almost at 10 years into my uh, tenure here at, at Oak Ridge, uh, how fast things are moving with science, high performance computing, um, advanced instrumentation, detector uh, technology, uh, in situ microscopy systems. So a few of the classes I would wish I would have taken were more computer science classes and a little bit more quantum quantum uh, uh, mechanics in, in the physics uh, classes. It's uh, it's funny how you say that because more and more I hear people say I wish I wish I'd taken. Uh, computer science and which I learned how to program. Uh, one of my questions to you is, have you ever self-taught yourself? I'm sure you know at least a little bit of coding at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the whole the whole neural network stuff um, is actually what I want to specialize in. So what's, oh, very what's cool. that buzzword? Yeah, I'm taking, um, I'm taking my artificial intelligence course next semester, actually, for my specialization. So I hope um, you enjoy it. It's going to be an invaluable skill set that you're going to have at the end of the day. Uh, I've already looked at the syllabus, and the math behind it is already uh, daunting enough. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see what I have to do uh, with, the, with the programming side. Um, well, I'll, but, I'll yeah. say something to that. Um, so your education basically doesn't stop when you finish your undergraduate or master's or a PhD. It's a continual process. And I like what you said about, like, so we do, we do continually uh, learn new things. And, and one of the programs that I'm trying to pick up right now is Python. It's an open source uh, package. Um, you can download it. Uh, you can share your uh, Python notebooks or Jupyter notebooks with anybody around the world. It's free. Uh, it's getting more and more popular with data scientists. So, and the great thing that out there is there's a lot of documentation. And so a lot of people are willing to put their code online and you can learn from that. So it's like if you're trying to learn a foreign language, it's very easy to see 
uh, uh, online and learn from that. Same way with codes. You can take some codes that people have already developed and, and apply those to your own uh, uh, problems that you're trying to solve as, as well. So Python is something I'm learning right now. Haven't got into neural network modeling or artificial intelligence yet, but uh, uh, maybe um, in the near future. Give it a year, give it two years, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, you've gotten a PhD, so learning is no, no fault <laughs> to you. I'm sure, I'm sure you know, you've been learning this long. What's the next, <laughs> what's the next subject? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my next question for you are, what, what are the benefits of being a member of MSA? Okay, great. So I, I started my first uh, microscopy meeting that's sponsored by the Microscopy Society of America in 2005. And believe it or not, it was in, in Oahu in Hawaii. And that was my first exposure to this community. So I was doing work looking at uh, how, uh, using this microscope, for example, how we can study defects how we can study um, dislocation, stacking faults, twinning in these uh, high temperature structural materials for uh, nickel-based super alloys for aircraft uh, gas turbine engines. So that was an opportunity to go to the conference and present the work that I'm doing. But more importantly, it was, it was seeing what else is out there. And over the course of the next few years, I got really involved with the Microscopy Society of America um, by um, attending meetings, uh, first of all, because you wanna see all the cool stuff that the scientists around the world are doing but more importantly, you can get in behind the scenes stuff. So I've done a lot of work with uh, symposium planning. So this is an opportunity for people uh, at all levels, whether you're a student, whether you're a seasoned scientist and so on and so forth, to get with, uh, with other experts in the field and say, hey, where is the field going? Where would we like to have a symposium focused on that people are interested in? So a lot of the, uh, some of the bread and butter that I'm doing is a technique called in situ microscopy and, it, and it's pretty, pretty vast, but basically you can use this instrument to do really interesting experiments uh, by having specialized holders. So for example, you can put a liquid inside there you, uh, by encapsulating between microfabricated uh, chips. Uh, likewise, you can flow different gases in there and so on and so forth, or you can heat it or you can electrically bias that. So, uh, that was an opportunity um, to be able to, to, to propose symposium, uh, propose symposium uh, for the next year, uh, get together the experts, invite uh, speakers that are well known in the area, have people contribute talks on that. Uh, another thing that I've been a part of is, is a thing called the Focus Interest Group. So around 2009, uh, a lot of people in the field started to get in, interested in a technique called in situ liquid cell microscopy. And this is foreign for a lot of people, uh, has a lot of um, benefits if you're able to study uh, materials uh, properties and changes in their native liquid environment. So for example, lithium ion batteries, it would be fantastic if we can use an instrument like this and look at how a battery charges and discharges at really high spatial resolution within the liquid. So that's something uh, that I've been working on as well. Uh, so I was involved in a focus interest group. I worked my way up um, uh, being a, a vice chair. So it's kind of like the vice president, uh, you organize different uh, events uh, one of them was um, these pre-meeting congresses. So the Sunday you would have before the workshop, we would get together, host an event, have invited speakers, gives the opportunity for people that are going to the meeting to see a really focused group of where the field's going, have presentations by the experts in the field, uh, and so on and so forth. And then I eventually led that uh, for the past two years. And so we hold business meetings, uh, we plan a future symposium, I was really fortunate to have uh, students uh, involved in this last time. I had really great students uh, from Arizona State University, Ethan Lawrence, uh, who's a PhD student in material science, and then also Joshua Vincent in the same group, PhD student in material science. So they helped get involved at an early age as well uh, with the organization, with the planning and running this event. And it's very powerful. Uh, so this community is, is great. I mean, you can get involved from the early stages, undergraduate, graduate research, all the way up to, you know, seasoned professionals to world renowned experts. And you can get together and uh, basically, uh, you know, share your knowledge and, and help plan where the future is going in this society. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, you pretty much kind of answered this next question with your response to the last question, but uh, well, can you tell me about the networking or educational opportunities that MSA offers? Absolutely. Uh, so we have a, a yearly meeting. It's called the annual uh, microscopy and microanalysis meeting. And within that week, you have a lot of events. So like I said before, we have uh, with the focus interest groups, we generally have uh, two pre-meeting congresses on that Sunday. So it's like the Sunday workshop. 
very focused, whether it's an in situ electron microscopy or atomic resolution imaging or bio, uh, 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 bio work uh, from biological science division. Um, so that's an event. They also have in, in week uh, tutorial lesson, uh, sessions where you can learn new techniques. So colleagues of mine at Oak Ridge have done this a couple times already where they teach data analytics, how to, how to code in Python and how you can use these different programming language to interpret, to analyze and interpret your data. Uh, a lot of network events, um, it's a really social community. Uh, so there's a lot of um, an opening ceremony on, on a Sunday. Uh, there's a lot of meetings, there are a lot of vendors that host um, uh, events where you can uh, interact with experts on a casual basis. Uh, so it's really, it's really a great community that, uh, that hosts all these different events all in one, one week. Awesome. Um, so I guess one of my final questions for you, what, what surprised you most about your career? Yeah, it, it's pretty interesting. Uh, so things happen at a really fast pace at a national laboratory. Uh, I really enjoy that. I was always the type of person that wanted to do a lot of different things uh, and try to do them as best as I can. But technology and science is really moving at a fast pace. And being at a place at a national lab where you work at a really fast paced environment to develop the next generation something, right, that would have a really big impact on society is very, uh, is very powerful to be a part of. Uh, so, for example, uh, one of the things I was really happy with uh, working on is, is using uh, graphene as a water desalination membrane. I think that's really important. Uh, so you can basically take a 2D material made out of graphene, punch tiny holes within it uh, with uh, an oxygen plasma, and use that as a selective seal, uh, a sieve basically, where you can transport water molecules but reject the salt. And I think something that, 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 that we've been a part of um, from a fundamental level will have a big global impact. Uh, for example, there's people that don't have fresh or clean water supplies. And I think that's really uh, powerful to be able to take a technology, develop it here, and then people at the end of the day can use it. Um, and of course, that, that's only a small portion of it. The, the folks that I work with at Oak Ridge National Lab and other Department of Energy National Laboratories probably have the same experiences, whether developing uh, new nanoelectronics, uh, new catalysts, uh, new fuel cells, new battery chemistry. So it's a very powerful thing. And I think being at a national lab, has an, we have an important mission, right? I mean, we're, we're funded by the US Department of Energy to develop these new techniques and technology that's gonna have an impact on our society uh, now and in the years to come. So I'm very fortunate to work at a place like this. That's awesome. Okay, well, uh, is there anything else that you would like to add or uh, think that would help somebody pursuing something in this, in this field of occupation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the main thing is just, just to get involved. Uh, whether you have an idea or an interest or, or you, you basically don't know uh, a technique or you don't know a technology is out there, it's very simple to uh, get involved in a society like Microscopy Society America and see where the field is going, see what the experts are doing and why they're doing that. Uh, it's very easy to get involved in, in events like this um, uh, or in societies like this. Uh, it's important to do internships um, it's, uh, to help uh, not only it, it helps shape the way that you think about science or engineering problems, but it also gives the opportunity to say, you know, this is great. Maybe I'm, I'm not, that's not my cup of tea. Maybe I'm more in the basic science or maybe I like solving problems uh, in, the, in, in the engineering space. So it's important to do, uh, you know, take your classes, uh, have your internships and get involved in societies like, uh, like the one I'm a part of, the Microsoft Society of America. Okay, well, uh, awesome. Um, that's all I have for you today. Um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything else, but if, if that was it, then I'd like to thank you for your time. It's been a very, very interesting experience. Um, you know, talking to you was, a, was probably one of my more interesting interviews <laughs> that I've had to do today. So that was, uh, that was very fun. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon.